You're planning to apply to business school and are already thinking of studying for a standardized test. But you may be wondering, what is a competitive score on the GMAT, GRE, or executive assessment? Well, we are here to answer that question. Hi, I'm Jeremy Scheinwald, founder of MBA Mission. And in this video, I'll be joined by Stacy Coprins, a GMAT, GRE, and EA teacher, and a longtime friend of mine, and head of curriculum at our test prep partner, Manhattan Prep, powered by Kaplan. Today, we'll explain what a strong test score is for you, what to look for in your subscores, and how the scores differ among these exams. But first, if you aren't sure which of these tests to take, check out our video here on GMAT versus GRE versus EA. So what is a competitive test score? There's a really simple answer, whatever score will be impressive to the school you're talking about right now. But that leads to a much more complicated question. What kind of score will be impressive for your particular schools? So you've got some research to do, and that research might actually impact your decision about which exam to take. The EA is a bit different than the other two, so we'll talk about that one in a minute. Most schools publish GMAT or GRE scores, and they'll publish their averages or sometimes their medians for their incoming students. And a lot of schools will also publish the middle 80% range, which is the range in which the middle 80% of their incoming students will fall. They chop off the top 10% and the bottom 10% because those are outliers. As a minimum, your test score should at least be within a school's 80% range. But you should really be targeting the school's average, which at top programs tends to be in the 700 to 730 range, but is more variable on the GRE side. The high end GRE averages can be around 165, 165. At the lower end, they can be around 160, 160. Of course, not everyone can be above average. Averages don't work that way. But the further you are from the average, the stronger the other parts of your application need to be. And if you find yourself below the bottom end of that 80% range, your task is even harder, unless you have something else truly extraordinary in your application. Meantime, if you're above the 80% range, the top 10% of your program, your target program's test scores, don't get cocky. Even with a near perfect score, you're not a shoe in to be admitted. MBA admissions is a holistic process. And the schools do also pay attention to your sub scores in the different sections. What they want to see can differ from person to person. For example, if you didn't take quant based classes in undergrad, you don't really do quant work at work, then they're probably going to use your quant test scores to make sure that you can handle the quant focused classes you're going to take in business school. Right. In terms of sub scores, I would say that a 45 46 GMAT quant subscore or a 163 quant GRE subscore is probably enough to establish your quantitative competencies. That is your readiness for the analytical work at most top MBA programs. And these exams are used for programs that are taught in English. So if you didn't do your undergrad degree in English, then schools may check your verbal scores, your essay scores to gauge whether you're ready to handle grad school level work in this language. Agreed. The programs will again analyze subscores on the verbal side too. A verbal subscore of 36, 37 on the GMAT or 163 on the GRE is probably enough to establish your verbal abilities. That is your ability to rapidly digest and apply concepts with the top programs. Yeah, and just one note, if you score at the minimum end of what Jeremy's saying on the GMAT, so 45 on quant and a 36 on verbal, your total score is not gonna cross that 700 level. So it won't be enough to beat the averages at the top programs. So if you're aiming for a top 10 school, you just need to try to max out your score in your stronger section, the quant or the verbal, in order to make sure that your total score is where you want it to be. So here's where I'm out of my depth. Stacy. how long would you suggest studying for these tests? Yeah, so either way, whatever you take, you're probably gonna need to study for at least two to three months, and there's a good chance you're gonna wanna take about four to six months before you take your exam. The good news, though, is that getting ready for the exam will actually help you get ready for B-School itself. So some of the content is going to serve as a solid intro to topics you'll learn in B-School. Stats is a great example. And you'll also get yourself back into study mode, doing homework and figuring out how to prioritize and just balancing school and other commitments. OK, well, we haven't talked about the third exam, the EA, and it's a bit different. It's a newer exam originally built for the executive MBA programs, and so far, Schools haven't really been publishing averages for the EA. Instead, they've been using the EA more as a threshold. As long as you score above a certain level, they don't care as much how high you score on the test. 
That threshold on the EA is about a 155 for a regular MBA and a 150 for executive MBA programs, with the highest possible score being a 174. In general, it is easier to achieve the threshold scores on the EA than the higher ones that are expected on the GMAT and GRE. So if you're going for an executive MBA, you will probably want to take the EA, assuming that your target schools accept it. If you're going for a regular MBA or another specialized master's in business, you may not have the choice to take the EA as a lot of programs don't accept it yet. Either way, do your research, check the websites of your target schools. If the EA is an option for you, consider taking it. It can really relieve the pressure of having to have that sky high test score. As I mentioned earlier, we've got another video for you on how to decide between the GMAT, the GRE and the EA. Take a look if you haven't watched it already. To sum up though, your goal should be to aim for a score that's above the average for your target school, but tests are not everything, so it's still a good idea to apply to a REACH school or two, even if your score is below the school's average, because the admissions officers are definitely looking at your whole profile. So have we covered everything? Yeah, I think so. Well, okay, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope to help you understand what GMAT, GRE, or EA scores you should be targeting when it comes to being accepted into your target business school. If you need any help at all with your test studies, reach out to us at Manhattan Prep. We actually have free starter kits for every exam, so take advantage of it. And when you have your target score and are ready to tackle your application, take us up on our offer for a free 30-minute consultation. Click the link below to sign up with me or another admissions expert on the MBA mission team. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, if you enjoyed the video and want to get more MBA admissions and application tips, don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for joining us, Stacey. My pleasure.